All right, everybody, it's time for a math lesson about multiplication and division. Today we're going to be looking at multiplication through some horses. Those are horses. Now, when we look at multiplication and division, it's important to note that multiplication and division are two sides of the same coin. Kind of like addition and subtraction go together, multiplication and division can go together. We're going to look at this as fact families in a few different ways. So let's dive right into what we're doing. So the first way to take some time to look at this one is multiplication as repeated addition. Now we already know this one. So for this, we're going to use these horses. Here I've got one horse. One horse. One horse has four legs. One times four is four. That's easy. We get that. Now, if we look at it with division, I would say that if I had four legs, how many horses would I have? I'd have one. If I had four legs, how many horses does that make? Well, there, each horse takes four legs, so I have one altogether. And you can see that 1 times 4 is 4, and 4 divided by 4 equals 1. There is a 4, a 4, and a 1, a 4, a 4, and a 1. That is a fact family. Let's look at the next set. Now, you've got two horses here. So, two horses each have four legs. How many legs do we have altogether? I've got eight legs. That's easy. We understand that concept. What if I had eight legs, and each animal that had some of those legs had four legs each? How many animals did I have? Well, I had two. Two times four is eight, and eight divided by four is two. A two, a two, a four, a four, an eight, an eight. If you know your multiplication facts, you can manage these simple division facts. Let's keep on going down the line. I've got one, two, three horses. There are three horses. Each horse has four legs. How many legs do I have all together? I've got 12 legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 legs. What if I flipped that and I had 12 legs? Each animal that had legs had four to themselves. How many animals do I have all together? Well, I'd have three because 12 divided by four equals three. Along with that, you can also look at 12 divided by three equals four. But we horses don't have three legs, so that's why we're not using this as an example. We're sticking to our fours. But still, same fact family, 12, 3, 4, 12, 3, 4, 12, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got four horses. If I've got four horses, how many legs do I have all together? That pause, that was where you were supposed to answer. If you'd like to rewind the video and go back and yell the answer at that time, I'm sure your parents would love that. And if they wouldn't, you should do it anyways. It'll startle them. Four times four, because each animal, horse has four legs, is 16. There's 16 legs altogether. Hey, if I had 16 legs, well, like, no, like, not if I had 16 legs, but if there were 16 legs somewhere, and each one of the animals that had some of those legs had four to themselves, what is 16 divided by four? Well, it would be four, because four times four is 16. Again, fact families. Let's do two more real quick and go through these. I've got one, two, three, four, five animals. Five horses. They're horses, I'm telling you. Each horse has got four legs. What is five times four? It's 20. I don't know what number I was writing, but I'm supposed to write 20. Hey, what if I had 20 legs? I'd have way too many legs. How many horses would there be all together? Well, each horse has four legs. 20 divided by four would be five, because five times four makes 20, as we saw right here. One more. One, two, three, four, five, six horses. There are six horses. Each horse has got four legs. How many legs do we have all together? Well, we've got 24, because 4 times 6 is 24. If I had 24 legs, and each one of those critters had 4 of them, how many critters do I have? Well, I'd have 6. Now, if I was talking about something like an insect, let's say that I had 24 legs, and each one of those legs belonged to an insect. We know that insects have 6 legs, so it would be 24 divided by 6, which would be 4. Fact, families, horses, insects. 12, 4, 6. 24, 6, 4, 24, 4, 6, 24, 6, 4. Fact families. So, when you're going through and doing multiplication and division, it's important to note that multiplication and division are similar. They are two sides of the same coin. Let's look at a few other ways that you can solve division problems if you're not quite sure about those multiplication facts. 
So we can do division. Let's do 24 divided by 4. If you're paying attention somewhere up here, there's already the answer to this. We can do this on a number line. Number lines for multiplication and number lines for division are similar to one another. Number lines for multiplication is repeated addition. Number lines for division is repeated subtraction. So to do this, I'm going to start with my larger number, 24. 24, stick it at this end. I'm going to take jumps of 4. So I'm going to go minus 4 gets me to 20. Minus 4 gets me to 16. Minus 4 more gets me down to 12. Minus 4 more gets me to 8. Minus another 4 gets me to 4. And minus 4 gets me to a whole lot of nothing. Now, to know my answer, what I've actually got to do is I've got to go through and count my jumps. I've got one jump, two, three, four, five, six. We saw up here the answer to 24 divided by 4 is 6. Down here, we just figured that out as well. The answer is 6. We counted our jumps. Now, if we were doing multiplication, again, multiplication and division, two sides of the same coin. Multiplication on this one would be 4 times 6 equals number line. Now, in the last one, we did repeated subtraction for division. Addition is the opposite. We're going to do repeated addition. I'm going to still start at 0. I'm going to do plus 4, which is going to land me at 4. Then I'm going to add another 4, which is going to land me at 8. Then I'm going to add another 4, which is going to land me at 12. Another 4, land me at 16. Another 4, lands me at 20. And one more jump of 4, lands me at 24. If you look at these two number lines, they're the same. 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0. 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, Six jumps, six jumps. The only thing that's different, we subtracted, we added. Multiplication and division are two sides of the same coin. What is four times six? Well, it's 24. Let's look at division on a number line when numbers don't quite match up evenly. This will be new for you. This is new. Pay attention. Now, let's say that I don't have 24 divided by 4. Let's say that I had 26 divided by 4. Now, you may be saying to yourself, hey, now, wait a minute. You can't divide 26 into four equal groups. That's not going to work because 26 is not a multiple of 4. And you'd be right. This is how we do it. We're going to make another number line. Same thing. Take the biggest number, stick it at this end. And we are going to switch colors to a new marker because I've got a whole bunch of them. Why not? I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I divided by 4. I'm dividing by 4 again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract minus 4. Going to get me down to, hey, wait a minute. That's supposed to be 26. Minus 4 gets me to 22. There we go. Minus another 4 gets me to 18. Minus another 4 gets me to 14. Minus another 4 gets me to 10. Minus another 4 gets me down to 6. Minus another 4 gets me down to 2. And then wait a minute, I cannot jump another minus 4. Because then I would be on this side of the 0. That would get me into negative numbers. We don't work with negative numbers in third grade, at least not yet. So I have some extras. So for me to answer this, I still count my jumps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. My answer is 6. But wait a minute. What about that 2? There's two extras to get here to 0. That is what this remains. What, is, what do I do with the remainder? Well, I write a little r. Because I have a remainder of 2. 24 divided by 4 is 6 with 2 left over. So it is 6. Remainder 2. This is new for us today. We will be looking at more of that going forward. Hey, wait a minute. There's one other way I want to show you real quick before we move on. This is multiplication and division as an array. We're going to still do 24 divided by 6 because consistency is important. So for us to do this, I'm going to create an array. Now, to create my array, I have two numbers. I've got 24 and I've got 6. I'm going to put my 24 into rows of 6. Watch how it works. 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. I did twenty four divided by six. I know that my answer is going to be four, and look, I can count it. I did columns, right? I did six columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, columns go up and down. What I'm gonna count is my rows. I have one row, two rows, three rows, and four rows. So 24 divided by six is four, because I got one row, two rows, three rows, and four rows. We did division on a number line. We did division with an array. We did division with pictures. I like these two the most. Pictures are time consuming, but I suppose all of this really is. You now have a task. That's upside down. Here it is. What I'd like you to do is write down these equations. One, two, three, four, five. It's only five of them, ladies and gentlemen. You can do this. There are five equations. Please write those five equations down on a separate piece of paper, and I would like you to solve them. You must solve them using an array, a picture, or on a number line. Even though several of you right now are looking at those saying, I know exactly what the answer is. I don't care. It's about the process. Sometimes it's about the journey, folks. I need you to do the work. You can do it as an array or as a number line. If you submit to me answers without the work, I'm going to fire back and ask you to do both an array and a number line. There's no shortcuts. BT dubs, that's the letter Q. To submit this to me, you will do the work on a separate piece of paper. If you have no, if you have no paper, y'all live in North Kingstown. North Kingstown has a plastic bag ban. I guarantee you've got paper bags somewhere. I don't care. Write it out on a paper bag. Get that sent over to me. Have somebody take a picture of it on a phone or using your Chromebook or whatever device you have. Email that on over to, to me. I'd like to see the work. Thanks for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you next time.